Hello all. So we are in day 15 of MCR 4 and we are starting our unit 3 material. One second. So unit 3 is our finance unit. So it's going to be going over uh, various algebraic formulas and whatnot. So you really want to make sure that you have at this point your calculator. And when I say calculator, you need one that has our caret key, which is how we're going to do exponents. So you will really want one that has this. If you have one of the TI 83, 84, 85, they all have that. Uh, 85 doesn't exist, sorry. But you need some type of exponent key. Okay. And you really will want to get one of those. Um, there's some 10 to $12 options at Target, things like that. Just make sure that you have that carrot key so we can do exponents. So before we go on into the meat of it, let's go through a little bit of some review. First of all, is changing percent notation to decimal notation. To decimal notation. So in our finance unit, we'll see things like interest rates, and they'll be 5%, 10%, 2.7%. And the key item here is that when you have them as percents, you need to convert them to decimal. If you're paying, say, for example, 5% of a $100 loan and you do direct multiplication, you would end up with $500 interest on a $100 loan. So instead, we want to convert that. And our interest is actually only $5. So how we convert it is we're going to make it two decimal places smaller. Essentially, we're dividing by 100 per cent means divide by 100. So when you see 2.7%, for example, you divide it by 100 and move that decimal one, two places, oops, sorry, making it smaller. So it turns into 0 0.027. I always put an extra zero there just to have it look nice, but you're only moving at the one, two spots. If you wanna convert a five, you move it over one, two for 0 0.05. And if you're not sure how to convert it, maybe it's 3.659%. At any point, you can divide it by 100. And that'll move it over correctly for you to be 0 0.3659. So if we want to then convert 0 0.56 back to percent, you multiply it by 100 or move the decimal places to right to make it bigger. So if at the end of a formula, I'm left with 0.05 and I wanna know what the interest rate was, I'm gonna multiply it by 100 to get it back to 5%. Because we're used to hearing things like 5%, 10%, 2 2.7% for our interest rate, it's not 0.025. So below we're gonna do a couple of practice problems. So anytime we get to practice problems, this is a good place to pause the video, try them, and then see how you did with the explanations. So to convert the percent to decimal, that's like dividing by 100. That's moving the decimal two places to the left. So this one becomes 0.1275. This one we add a zero in, 0 0.895 for example. Uh, to get decimal to percent, that's multiplying by 100 or moving it 1, 2 to the right, making it bigger. So multiply it by 100. This gives me 33%. Multiply it by 100. That gives me 112.5%. So then just pause a minute, make sure that's making sense. So then for a little more review, we're also going to talk about order of operations. When we get into the finance formulas, you're going to see quite a lot of fractions with exponents, with parentheses. So it's really important to know your order of operations. We always start with parentheses. And if there's multiple sets, work with your inside most and then work your way out. Within parentheses, you also follow order of operations, but make sure to do them first. Exponents is next. So if I had, let's see where my pen went, you know, one plus 0.05 squared, I would do my parentheses first and then square that. Then if I had plus six over here, 
multiplication and addition come next, then addition, sorry, multiplication and division, then addition and subtraction. So your multiplication division works left to right, addition subtraction works the same. If you see a fraction bar and have several items written up here, that's assumed you do the top and then you do the bottom. So they're kind of built in parentheses there that you would do first. I always remember this is please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, but I do have an Aunt Sally. So if you wanna change it to something else that you could remember, but it tells me the order of operations. And again, if there's multiple sets, you start with the inside and then work your way out. So again, this says practice problems. So if you're feeling pretty confident, you would wanna pause me at this point and try these out up to you how you wanna go through them though. So I'm gonna go through them as if you had paused me and tried them. So inside the parentheses, we're gonna work first and we're gonna do the multiplication. So inside parentheses, you then work order of operations as well. So this will be two, four plus 20. Then we would work inside the parentheses, which are 24, two times 24 is 48. And you should get that number. Be very careful how you work through these. This one, you would do 1,050, and then you would actually divide it by this whole piece together. So you would do your 1,050, and then take your 0.07, I'm grabbing my calculator out, two times three, which is 0.21, and then when we divide that, we're gonna get a much larger number because we're dividing by a fraction. So we're gonna get 5,000. Sorry, we're dividing by a decimal. Now, if you had typed it in 1,050 divided by 0 0.07 times three, you don't get the right number. So you need to make sure if you have parentheses that you split those correctly. All right, then for number six, I'm gonna go parentheses first. So that turns into a five. And I'm just writing every step out here. You know what, that was a four. Now I go multiplication just in order. So I can actually just go through here and go 0.84 times five times 500. So I'm getting 500 plus, and I just did this as one step left to right, giving me 2,600 total. All right, over here, we do the multiplication first. So that gives me 0.216. Tip, don't round to these at all until the end. Then I do this piece times a thousand and I get 1,216. And again, any decimals you have, carry them all the way through do not round them until the end. All right, so then getting into a little bit of the meat of this. If we have algebraic formulas now, we want to figure out how to evaluate them. So touching a little bit on the finance, this is I equals P-O-R-T. So it's four variables. And when you get into that lesson one in your 154, these will all uh, start to be clear that this is interest, initial value, rate, and time. But for now, we're given everything. And we want to find I given these three items are given. So I is equal to P. And remember when you have a rate, you want to divide it by 100 and put it in that way when you have a decimal times three. And then this one, you can go straight across and you could get 84, you can plug it directly in. So on your calculator, you could type in 400 times 0.07 times three. And because it's all multiplication, it'll just do it from left to right anyway. And that's on any calculator you have. All right, for the next one, and again, these are practice. Once you feel like you got the hang of it, try them. It's find PO given that I is 3125, but then it's divided by, we're gonna put parentheses around these. 
because there's technically parentheses there. And again, the 2.5, you divide it by 100 to put it in that decimal form. So when I type this in the calculator, it's going to be 3125 divided by, make sure these are in parentheses. And as you're going through, really make sure you're getting the right answers in the calculator before we get to the longer problems. So you should get 25,000 there. For question 10, we want to find A, and we're given a slightly different formula. So it says A is this PO, 1 plus R, put that in decimal, times T. So if you wanted to put this directly in the calculator, you can. Um, it's 8,000 times, and then just put this in parentheses, and it would be able to do it. And then that would give you, if you do it right, so it's 8,000 times, make sure the 1 plus 0.03 times 12 is in parentheses. It'll handle the multiplication. You get 10,880 if you have done this correctly. Okay, so right now would be a really good time to try 11 and 12 on your own. So for this one, it's A is PO plus PO times R times T. And again, notice every time I am putting the rate into a decimal by dividing it by 100. So in the calculator, you could put this in as 2,500 plus point, uh, to, to do point, sorry, I was reading my R there, times four times 2,500 or the order I wrote it in, it doesn't matter. But this one would actually be able to be done um, entirely in a regular calculator with one foul swoop. If you're not feeling good there, you could also put the parentheses around there if you just want to make sure. If you did it correctly, you are getting an answer of 2,660. If your calculator answers are coming out right, you're good to go. <clears throat> and then one more formula. Again, we want to assume there's parentheses around top and bottom whenever we're working with that fraction bar. So it's gonna say T is equal to, I'm gonna put these parentheses in, A minus PO divided by PO times R. Again, make sure you're dividing by 100 for that rate. So when I put this in, um, let's do the top, it would be 100 and then put the bottom in, in parentheses. Oh, my pen is not, not loving this. And you should be in good shape. So you can put it like that in your calculator and it'll give you a grand total of 3.3 because we were rounding to tenths, which is one decimal. All right, so our next section now is being able to move around our equations to solve for a specific variable. So in the examples above, we had already solved for the variable, meaning that we had the variable isolated and already ready to go. But say you need T in this equation that says 1500 equals 1400 times 0.04 T. We need to be able to algebraically move around to get the specific variable. So when you're working to get a specific variable, if you need to solve for it, you go reverse order of operations. These are both being multiplied, so I'm gonna divide by both. And when I do that 1500, I'm gonna note that these are gonna be in parentheses. I know it's a lot of fours and zeros. So when I type this in, it's going to be 1500 divided by parentheses, 1400 times 0.04, essentially dividing by both pieces, and that's going to give me my T.
So if you're working on that, you should get T is approximately 26.786. And it does say round to thousands, which is three decimal places. To solve for R here, same idea. We're going to divide by everything that was being multiplied. So when we type this in, it's going to be 2,500 divided by parentheses, 1,000 times 7 or 7,000. And that gives us approximately 0.357 for RR. And if we were asked for a percent, we would convert this back. This one now says round to the 100. So just note that we're rounding different ways. Uh, solve for PO. So here is A. A equals PO, 1 plus RT. So since I'm multiplying, I'm going to divide the whole thing by that. So for part A, PO is equal to A, all in parentheses, one plus RT. Then for part B, it now says find it. So PO is equal to A divided by one plus R times T. And you should be able to put that all in and come up with an answer that is about to match mine. And you should get um, approximately 900. Now, how I get 900 is you get something like $888.88, but it says round to the nearest 100, meaning $100. So 888 goes up, not down. So when you're working through your questions, really watch the rounding, because that's probably one of the more common areas of why is my answer wrong when I think I'm doing it right? And the answer is you're just not rounding it right or correctly. All right, next one. This would be a great one to go ahead and pause and try yourself. So to solve for T, these are being multiplied, so we're gonna divide by them. So T equals I divided by PO times R, and I'm introducing the parentheses. Part B, go ahead and solve. T equals I, divided by parentheses 3,000 times 0.025. Make sure to convert that. And then you can type it in. As long as you have the parentheses, you get T is 3. All right, make sure you're feeling good about that. What we're going to do next is introduce the concept of simple interest. So finance formula number one. So the benefit here is you do not have to memorize these formulas. You are going to be given them uh, in a formula sheet. So for simple interest, it is interest that is applied to the principal only. So we've got three formulas. This one just calculates the interest. This is the amount in the account at the end, or you can, can yeah, find it this way as well. So there's three formulas for simple interest. What I do is I go through and say, what do I have? And pick the equation that way. What do I have? What do I need? So the I we've been talking about is your interest. How much did the account accrue? So if you put in $1,000 and it gets $100 interest, I is 100. PO is the starting amount, P null, P start. R is the decimal interest rate. T is always measured in years for simple interest. It's time in years. So if T is 3.3, that's fine. It's 3.3 years. And then A is the amount at the end. So it's the amount you started with plus the amount you gained, the principal plus the interest. You don't have to memorize these, you just have to know how to use them. So how you know you have simple interest is it doesn't compound, you just get it on the initial value, but banks, problems, all of those, they do have to specify what you have. So you wouldn't have to guess, am I getting simple interest, am I getting compound interest or not? So we are gonna try three problems, working through them when you feel like you understand it, 
you know, that's a good time to stop and try one, but let's definitely go through kind of the meat of these together. So we deposit. So that's gonna be my PO, the amount I start with. So when I'm working these problems, I'm gonna start figuring out what I have. Also, I know it's simple interest because it says so. <clears throat> I have a rate. I have a time. And this one is asking for I. So I'm going to use my I formula. I is PO times R times T. Because I need I, I have PO, I have R, I have T. So again, I'm looking at what do I have that I can directly solve this. You should be able to take that directly in and your interest is 137.76. So how much is in the account? That's this A question. Well, one of our formulas says A is your initial value plus your interest. So I started with 1230. I made $137.76. So it make perfect sense that I end up with 1,367 and 76 cents at the end. Eighteen, let me change the color just so it looks different so we can tell. What's the simple interest rate? So this one I am being asked for R. Investment is 750. Interest is 18525 and it is saying it's simple interest and time is 9.5. So I can oh, I can use that same interest formula that I used above, which said I equals P O R T, but I need to solve for R. So if I move things around, it's I divided by P O times T is going to give me my R. And again, we did this up there. We're dividing it over. So R is equal to I divided by parentheses PO times T. So my rate that I get is 0.026, but it's usually going to ask this rate as a percent, so multiply it by 100 to get your 2.6. All right, last problem here. How much should I invest? All right, let's see what we have. We have R. It's a simple interest. We need the interest. I'm sorry, we have the interest. We have time. It's five divided by 12 because it's supposed to be in years, 12 months in a year. So if I use I equals P-O-R-T. Why did I grab that one? Because I have an I, so I'm gonna see if I can use it. How much should I invest as PO? So that's the right one. And again, you kind of get used to, which one's the right one if you really write those variables out? So we need PO. So PO is I divided by RT. Move those around. So PO is gonna be the interest divided by R times t, you can still plug all that in into your calculator um, and you get five, three, 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 and 33. So you want um, $100 interest in that account after five months, you needed to put in over $5,000. All right, make sure to complete your day 15 homework assignment and have a wonderful day.